it is estimated 200 million pilgrims have already visited Lourdes from 1860, while there are only 70 reported miracles, making it effectively the most risky lottery, which has in stakes not just the money, but health and life. With that in mind, Jessica Hausner takes us in her most acclaimed movie to Lourdes. Welcome in the seventh episode of Movie Thought. Messieurs, dames, s'il vous plaît, vous ne bougez pas, me faites un petit sourire à trois, s'il vous plaît. Un, deux, trois, cheese. Did you notice that strange crosses? Well, have you ever heard? about the Order of Malta, or maybe have you ever heard about their predecessors, Knights of Hospitaire, the first conquerors of Jerusalem? In the name of God, in the name of God, in the name of God, we got to heaven! Even though most of the money they have acquired has been confiscated by the French government in the 18th century, they still continue its medieval tradition. The noble lineage is required and most of the knights of Malta comes from the Austrian or German Catholic aristocracy. It wouldn't be the most prudent to say, but most of them are rich kids. Kids of bank managers, of big landlords of like the forests, landscapes, castles, who donate one week of the year to serve others. That's their contribution to the society, while most of the time they spent in a hyper-capitalist way. And the pilgrims actually like those trips with the Order of Malta because, because they are educated people and, and friendly people because of that. So some pilgrims told me they prefer to go with those people from Ordo de Malta because they treat them nicely. But some of the nurses, for example, can be really mean. So they don't like the other pilgrims as much pilgrimages as much as the one with the Order of Malta. It adds an extra dynamic to the movie in which the two opposite worlds clashes. The world of people who can achieve everything, who have all the opportunities in their hands, and the world of people, many of whom only hope is left. In that slow-paced art house movie, Hausner succeeds to build up feeling of anticipation. It is not exaggeration to call Lourdes a suspense movie, given everybody expects something to happen. While watching this movie, we can feel like a pilgrims there in Lourdes. We are waiting and we know that something will happen. J'ai rêvé que je suis paralysée et la Vierge Marie m'apparaît. Elle me dit quelque chose. Alors je me lève et je m'approche pour bien la comprendre. Et à ce moment-là, je remarque que je ne suis plus paralysée. Christine, with multiple sclerosis, has been confined to the wheelchair for most of her life. She goes to the Pyrenees mountains to Lourdes for a journey to make a change in her life. We are her companions throughout the movie. And what is striking is that she's living the normal life or like as normal as it is possible. We can see that emotionally wise, she's just the same as everybody of us. Have you already spotted that 40 years old Really handsome caretaker there. Je suis souvent en colère. Pourquoi c'est moi qui suis tombé malade et pas un autre? 
Pourquoi moi Ou croyez-vous que celui qui a l'usage de ses jambes est forcément plus heureux Prions ensemble. Seigneur, nous te prions, guéris cette jeune femme, guéris son âme, et si tu le veux, guéris également son corps. She is confined to the wheelchair, but well, she is in Lourdes. And she has the hope, is daring the fate, coming up with the question, what if, what if the wind would blow and she would be able to stand on her legs. Okay, so we have seen the Christian standing, yet I wouldn't dare to spoil the rest of the movie because that's when the biggest secrets and uh, most of the information that Hausner provoked in the movie reveals. Starting with the question whether Christine is ready to join the living of healthy people that is full of competitiveness, jealousy. Another one is whether her miracle is real. Maybe it's only a dream. Maybe the medical examination will show that she is not really healthy. And the third, and I believe the most fundamental question that this movie poses is if there is a price that we need to pay even for the miracles. Saint-Esprit, Jésus et la Vierge Marie sont assis sur un nuage. Ils font des projets de vacances. Le Saint-Esprit dit, j'ai une idée, on va à Bethléem. Jésus dit, Bethléem, non, on y est déjà allé souvent. Le Saint-Esprit réfléchit et dit, j'ai trouvé. Allons à Lourdes. La Vierge Marie fait un bond et dit, ouais, super, j'y suis encore jamais allé. I also feel obliged to assure you that's not a Christian fairy tale movie. Because it is based on all the scientific knowledge that we possess. The thing may be there are some exceptional diseases medical science still cannot fully explain. One of them is multiple sclerosis of which many miracle healings happen. Christine, the main character of the movie, is example of one of them. It is a place where people do find hope. I know this sounds ridiculous and I was really, when I came there, I thought, Ooh, what's that? But then after a while I understood it does work for a lot of people. They are not, no one forces them to go there. The place exists because wa people want that to exist. They want to go there. They want to have that place where someone tells them maybe everything will be fine. Otherwise, the place wouldn't exist. Certainly, I can recommend this movie for everybody who likes the cinema which provokes to think, that opens the new ways and poses the questions that in normal environment you wouldn't be able to really consider. Jessica Hausner, as always, gives us a great aesthetically wise movie the takes are long yet it feels really rewarding to watch some of them and that <laughs> well that's really slow paced movie so you can expect some scenes that will take minutes with barely any action uh, yet for all aesthetes it will feel really great what is more there are there is high intensity of symbolism which couldn't be omitted in the movie that considers the religion. I 
would like to introduce some grading system and as this is the first movie I would like to give it four and a half star Okay, and if you survived until this point, there's a time for a premium part in which I will talk about my personal story that provoked this episode. I've been lucky in life. I wouldn't dare to say the miracle happened to me, but like when I was in the sixth grade, I had a terrible car accident, after which I was for two weeks in coma. And I will remember to this day, my best friend organized the mass for my life, given my condition was really severe. Uh, I remember from the hospital that I needed to relearn how to walk, how to live normally. I woke up one day and realized that I, I cannot walk, I cannot move my arm. Uh, I remember being on the surgery table, having removed glass from my eyes. and. There are some people who told me that there was a miracle that happened to me, but I try to refrain from such thinking, given there are doctors, medical experts that help me. I were in the great hospital. And yeah, I I feel really lucky. Yet, until this day when I'm traveling all around the world and I am in places like Lourdes, uh, like Częstochowa in Poland, uh, or recently Vatican, Rome. I, I feel obliged to say thank you to that higher being, whatever it is. Uh, and I remember <laughs> Back to the times I was a really faithful Christian, so like times of like the high school. Every time I was in the places I was in the church, I was striving to hear back. Uh, so I was going there waiting for something to happen. And I was doing it constantly, even though later on I wasn't as faithful Christian as I used to be. As a tourist, I still paid attention not to miss out on any signal or any exceptional metaphysical interference in my life. And I've been, as I have said, in Czestochowa. Uh, well, I met there really great people. All experiences from there uh, are something I, I, I won't forget for the whole life. But when I went there, nothing exceptional happened. Then I was in Lourdes. I was also expecting everything, yet nothing happened. Last year, I spent in Milan. And I had an exceptional opportunity because during the coronavirus, I could see the Last Supper, not as usual with the crowd of tourists, but by myself alone there, uh, well, it was quite an investment because it was like over 50 euros to the, for the seeing of that. But like all the legends and myths that rose around the Last Supper made me to expect something 
something great to happen. Yet, like, I remember staring at that painting absolutely dissatisfied because there was nothing except, I don't know, uh, the aesthetical excitement, you know? Uh, so I moved out from there. I went to the nearest church. I prayed a bit, thank, thanked God for all I've got and all the opportunities I have now. And that, I was a bit disillusioned and like, uh, it was sort of a turning point in my life in which I like realized that maybe, uh, well, even though for a long time I wasn't really attending masses every Sunday, I thought like, well, maybe I shouldn't really pay that much attention to expect something to happen, to, you know, put faith uh, in front of the logical thinking. And after that, uh, I went for the trip to Rome and to Vatican. And there, well, th there were some people, you know, like th they weren't like completely empty, but there weren't as many as, as usual are there. Uh, and I remember that when I came to the Sistine Chapel, I didn't expect anything. Yet, I was standing there in the center of the Sistine Chapel, surrounded by people. I looked at the ceiling and I heard calling. You should follow your patron, St. Paul. You should follow the path of Paul. And I was like thinking, well, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you... <laughs> like, well, I could like... It wasn't coming from my mind, you know? It was pretty distressing for me. So I was looking for some comfort there, like, well, I I needed to consult it with someone. Uh, also, I've been looking around like the museum for something to happen. And yeah, uh, in Vatican, there is a usual thing that there are like tables by which there is a priest standing and you can take some conversation. So like, I came there and I, I talked with the priest, telling him everything I experienced. So he gave me that speech of how St. Paul was a great sound and how he was the biggest contributor for the church. Why I was thinking about, well, under Christian BS that is coming to my ears. And I remember that at that point, I stopped believing. I just gave up. And yeah, uh, most probably I will never know whether it was a miracle or not. But like that experience has really taught me that it is not the matter whether you believe in miracles, but rather... You can be sure that no miracles will happen unless you will believe in them. And with that great moral, I would like to leave you for now. Uh, thank you very much for the for today, for this session, for this episode, for being with me. And hope to see you <laughs> next time. Uh, remember about liking, subscribing, because it supports me. Thank you very much once more, and see you next time. Sorry, you can't
sorriso che sa di felicità.